My name is Christoph Balz. I'm the executive director of the North-South Initiative German Watch. Um, and today we want to present you in this press conference the Climate Change Performance Index. It's uh, an activity we as German Watch do together with Can Europe. It's the third time that we present the Climate Change Performance Index. The index compares the 56 most emitting countries in the world, and together they cover more than 90% of global greenhouse gas emissions coming from the uh, field of, of energy, energy-related greenhouse gas emissions. Um, the data we use in this index, the energy-related data, come all from the International Energy Agency. And, um, they were published just some weeks ago. And, um, and uh, then we, are, we have more than 60 um, experts judging the international policy and the national policy of these 56 countries. And this is 20% of the index, this policy judgment. I would like to explain very briefly how the index works. How do we try to answer the question, who is um, good in climate change performance and who has to improve his, um, its performance? As you can see on the slide, we have three different partial ratings. Um, the first and the most important partial um, sector are the emission trends. We measure the emission trends in uh, four different sectors, the sector in the sector energy, transport, residentials, and industry. The trend provides 50% of a country's final rating. Second, we measure the emissions level of a country. Here, the particular emission situation of a country is taken uh, into account. So it's something like a starting point for a country um, which uh, shows how high or how low is the emissions level. Um, and third, the policy um, of a country is being evaluated. This provides 20% of a country's final rating. Here we do every year a uh, big um, assessment. We ask uh, international, uh, nation, national uh, climate experts of their countries to uh, make an assessment of the climate policy in their countries. So as you can see, um, the trend and the, and the policy of a country is weighted together with 70%. So an ambitious and effective uh, climate policy can lead the country to, uh, to the top flight of a ranking. So when you, can look, when you look at the different index categories, you see that the index is not just a, a ranking, it's an analysis tool as well. Um, we are able to analyze where are the individual strengths and where, are, uh, where have the countries improved their performance. There aren't actually any, any real winners. There's nobody top of the class in the sense that uh, you really have uh, countries that in their policy uh, um, ranking and the policy score are um, getting the high, the really top marks. The average mark on the policy side is uh, um, 3.9 out of 5, and 5 being the lowest score. We have uh, the second year running in the top spot, Sweden, and as you can see, um, there are a number of, of European countries in there, also Germany, Hungary, and the UK. And I think what's really notable is that there is also a quite strong group of uh, major emerging economies that are present in the top 10, such as Mexico and India, and also Brazil and Argentina. And in terms of the link to the negotiations here, I would say that that is potentially also the kind of grouping, and if you go to the top 20 or top 25 in the index, you can expand that and you see a similar pattern, that there are possibilities there um, that we see uh, judging from the ranking here that there is you know, 
scope for a progressive coalition that can move uh, things forward also at the international level. But uh, in terms of, in particular, the overall performance along a pathway that globally will lead us to avoiding dangerous climate change, uh, the scores from the rankings show that there, we are nowhere near. Quite a number of the top 10 emitters worldwide are unfortunately found uh, in, the top, in the bottom, in the down 10. And uh, starting from the, from the deep end, the countries that here in the negotiations in the lingo of the United Nations fall into the Annex 1 category. Notably, obviously, the United States of America, Canada and Australia and also Russia. There are also a number of uh, non-Annex 1 countries that are in this category. Saudi Arabia, you will be familiar with, has, uh, um, very, um, has, doesn't have a very uh, good reputation at these negotiations for being progressive. One of the special cases that I'd like to highlight just to give you a better sense of how the index can work and how especially uh, in terms of the annual comparison it, it can really show you where a country is heading is that case of Australia because obviously you all know that um, just this week uh, Australia, the, the new Prime Minister decided to as one of the first political acts to ratify the Kyoto Protocol and there, so there is some clear promise from the new administration that the climate change policy of Australia will change if you were to assume that Australia was going into that direction, if you were to add the positive score on the climate policy side to Australia, it could jump up in the index by around 20 ranks. So just to reiterate what uh, Jan said, especially on the climate policy side, which is 20% of the overall index and the emission trends, which are half, together with over two-thirds of the ranking, changes in policy that affect changes also in the emission trends can move a country up and down in this index rather clearly. I only want to tell you that um, all the graphs which are in the uh, uh, brochure of the Climate Change Performance Index, you can also download at the website of Germwatch, germwatch.org. Um, <coughs> so if you want to make use of uh, this, uh, please feel free to do this, it um, should be on the web page from this minute on. And, um, and now the floor is free for questions from your side. Aber das ist natürlich verständlich. Um, wir haben jetzt die Emissionen von 2005. When it's in the first top 15, the, there is still a lot of room for improvement. Ja, Hauptsächlich an Nutzung von massiver Nutzung von erneuerbaren Energien. If you know, Japan takes a very proactive and progressive role in the negotiations, then the world's energy related 